Last week, I showed you a video of Sarah Brady being arrested by Officer Fiscus with the Meridian, Idaho Police Department. He had originally showed up to a call where about 100 people were playing at a park during a time when the mayor had declared that it was too dangerous to play at the park. The mayor had ordered that people be asked to leave the park, but that no arrests be made to force the rule on anybody. However, when Officer Fiscus came out acting like a total d Sarah Brady challenged his ego. When challenged to make an unlawful arrest, Officer Fiscus' ego got the best of him. Officer Fiscus, like a true 40 percenter, put hands on Sarah Brady, arrested her, and caged her up for challenging his ego. She was charged and booked for trespassing even though a dozen other people were standing in the same exact place as her. Today I'm going to show you the part of the video where one of the women that was recording the arrest, also at the park with her kids, attempts to humanize the badge, trying to appeal to the humanity of these police officers. However, with all the TikTok videos and PR stunts out there meant to humanize the badge, these officers dehumanized the badge again by their own actions in their official capacity as police officers. Okay, so, so just kind of person to person, I mean, do you think that it makes sense to close the park down when, you know, people are going to the grocery store, they're touching everything, it's not for you me know? To say, man. Okay, I just I'm wanted to... I'm a officer, I'm not a government official as far as a belonging. So she said person to person. So she tried to talk to you like a person and you said, well, I'm not a person. Essentially, essentially that's what I hear. I'm not a person. I'm a law enforcement officer. Oh, I get... Okay, I just wanted to... I'm a law to... enforcement officer, I'm not a government official as far as a lawmaker. Oh, I get that, but I'm, you know, and I'm you're, not you're asking you as a police that... officer, I'm just asking you like as a person, you know? I have my personal opinions and I gotta keep those to myself when I'm on duty, so... Okay. Do you think that there's like a limit at which you, you decide in your, you know, within yourself, within your spirit, where you're like, I just can't get on board with this. Like, I just, I can't agree with the way that our government and our elected leaders Whatever, and our so authorities great, are telling us. Great question. The thing is, is, when I put on the badge, I put on the uniform, I have to take all of my, uh, I gotta take a lot of my beliefs, yeah. personal beliefs and things, and I kinda gotta set those aside and I've got to enforce the law. Whether I agree with that law or not, I have to enforce that law. This mentality of, I must obey authority no matter what, shared by many police officers and military personnel around the world, was explored in one of the most powerful, intriguing experiments ever conducted in recorded history. Stanley Milgram, a psychology professor at Yale University, conducted an experiment focusing on the human conflict between obedience to authority versus obedience to one's own conscience. His goal was to try to understand why something like the Holocaust could possibly happen. What would make good men commit such evil acts? Most of those who were accused of genocide at the Nuremberg trials argued that obedience was the reason for what they did, believing that this was a valid defense and excuse for their horrible actions. They argued that they were just following orders from their superiors and those that they believed to be an authority. This was quite literally the argument that a Meridian Idaho police officer in 2020 just made. The thing is, is when I put on the badge, I put on the uniform, I have to take all of my, uh, I gotta take a lot of my beliefs, yeah. personal beliefs and things, and I kinda gotta set those aside and I've got to enforce the law. Whether I agree with that law or not, I have to enforce that. The purpose of Milgram's obedience study was to try to find out how many people truly do believe that they must obey authority, even if it violates their own conscience. What is there in human nature that allows an individual to act without any restraints whatsoever, so that he can act uh, inhumanely, harshly, severely, and in no way limited by feelings of compassion or conscience. The problem I wanted to study was a little different. It went a little bit further. It was the issue of authority. Under what conditions would a person obey authority who commanded actions that went against conscience? These are exactly the questions that I wanted to investigate at Yale University. It is May 1962. An experiment is being conducted in the Elegant Interaction Laboratory at Yale University. I'll leave a link to a couple of videos that describe the experiment and its results in a little more detail, but in summary, a participant was put in front of a board of switches with different voltage levels labeled on them, believing that the person on the other side of the machine was hooked up to it. He was to ask questions, and when the person believed to be hooked up to the machine got the answer wrong, he was to shock them, starting with the lowest shock level and gradually proceeding to the highest shock level which was labeled on the machine 
to deliver a potentially deadly shock. 450 volts. That's it. Now continue using the last switch on the board, please. The there was a, quote, scientist in the room to be the perceived authority figure who was to verbally push the participant to continue delivering shocks no matter how much the man he believed was hooked up to the machine begged for the torture to stop. Clearly, the situation here was quite arbitrary. You get shocked for simply answering a question wrong. But shockingly, over 60% of participants were willing to go all the way up the board, potentially killing the other participant. None of them, though, went all the way up the board on their own. Every one of them stopped at some point and wanted to end the experiment and had to be verbally pushed by the perceived authority to kill their fellow man. Continue, please. Let me out of here. My eyes me. Go Let me on. Out. Let me out. Clearly, you know, when we say people went to the top of the shock board, it wasn't like they were going blithely, sadistically. People went stop and go, stop and go. They were in a state of conflict, which was created a tremendous amount of stress. So that was the, the perceived authority, a scientist had a list of very specific lines that were used to persuade the participants to move all the way up the board, killing the other participant. In order, the probes were, first, please continue. Second, the experiment requires you to continue. Third, it is absolutely essential that you continue. Fourth, you have no other choice but to continue. Sadly, Milgram's experiment proved that the majority of people would kill their fellow man if ordered to do so by a man in a lab coat that they've never met, so long as they can be convinced that the man is authority. When asked how many people would obey authority to kill their fellow man, almost every single one of them said that they would not, that they would draw the line before it got to that point. But Milgram's experiment proved that over half of every day, decent human beings, our neighbors, our friends, our family members, would never draw that line, and that they would obey authority, killing their neighbor even under the most arbitrary situations. One of Stanley Milgram's basic contributions was that you don't ask people what they would do given this hypothetical situation. You put them in the situation. Well, who was actually pushing the switch? I was. But he kept insisting. I told him no, but he said he got to keep going. However, there were a very small handful of people who admitted that they would do anything if told to do so by perceived authority. This Meridian police officer is one of those people. Do you think that there's like a limit at which you you decide in your, you know, within yourself, within your spirit, where you're like, I just can't get on board with this. Like, I just, I can't agree with the way that our government and our elected leaders Whatever, and our so authorities great, are telling us. Great question. The thing is, is, when I put on the badge, I put on the uniform, I have to take all of my, uh, I gotta take a lot of my beliefs, yeah. personal beliefs and things, and I kinda gotta set those aside and I've got to enforce the law. Whether I agree with that law or not, I have to enforce that law. What's she doing? So, trespassing. But. That was a little girl that asked that question. Did you hear that? What was she doing that was so bad? The law or not, I have to enforce that law. What was she doing? So, trespassing. But and so what I'm saying, so it doesn't matter what that law would be, you would enforce it. You don't have your as own personal it, morality as as that would. As long as it doesn't interfere with the Constitution. And this is, so I know you, people are yelling Constitution. The little girl just says, wow, and walks away. You don't have your own personal morality that would. Wow. As long as it doesn't interfere with the Constitution. And this is, so I know people are yelling Constitution things, but this has nothing to do with the Constitution. <laughs> Uh, okay. There, 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 there are limits to freedom of speech. There's limits to the Second Amendment. But we're not There's hurting anybody. I know that. Well, then no how what's the limit? says you have to be hurting anybody. I love the dialogue they try to have with the non-human. We're not hurting There's, anybody. I know that. Well, no then no how what's the limit? says you have to be hurting anybody. What's the limit? Depends on from place to place. I'm not going to get the theoretical thing about what is. Whoa, 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 whoa. But, but, I feel like man, it's fair. Man, man. What is the limit? It depends from place to place. Are you telling me that that men, women, that everyone has inalienable rights inherently? That you are inherently born with inalienable rights, but those rights vary from place to place? Are you stupid, Ossifer? 
make no decision with this. You just said you would uphold the Constitution. Yes, sir, I do know my oath. I do. And I am I am following my oath right now. Can you recite it? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. That means you don't know it then. That means you don't know it. Do you remember a lot of stuff too? Yeah, but that's pretty important. Why, why would you say you know your oath when you just don't know your oath? I mean, why not just say, no, I don't know it. I don't know it. You don't think for yourself. You let other people tell you what to do. You refuse to consult your own, your own conscience. And uh, you believe that you're upholding an oath that you don't know. How could you possibly say you're upholding something that you don't even know? None of this, none of it could happen without mindless order following enforcers. There's absolutely no way that any governor, um, any mayor, any city council member, any legislator was going to come to this park and kidnap people for playing at the park. This stuff can only happen if we have brainless, mindless order followers who have abandoned their humanity, which is the ability to choose for themselves, believe in, in false authority and obey anything they're told to do. Residents of Meridian, Idaho and everywhere else in the world make no mistake. History has proven that those who are willing to abandon their conscience to obey authority to any degree are likely to obey authority all the way up to the point of torturing and or killing you. Historically, these men have not been inherently evil men. They have been good men who give up their own agency, therefore becoming the tool of the one who would use the riches of the world to wage war. I know it is in the culture of Idahoans to respect authority, which is why so many insist on backing the blue no matter what they do. But I would urge you to be allegiant to what is right, rather than being allegiant to men that you perceive to be authority, whether they be right or wrong. There is no virtue in honoring men that have abandoned their own conscience and free agency. And by supporting it, you are sending a message to your brothers, your sisters, your fathers, your sons in law enforcement that this type of behavior is acceptable. I believe that it's unfair to both you and them to send that message. Well, who was actually pushing the switch? I was, but he kept insisting. I told him no, but he said he got to keep going.